sorry, I'll move on in just a moment. I don't like taking over services, and that's not going to happen. But let me tell you, God is trying to let you know tonight that the power of the Holy Ghost is for you. And when I was 16 years old, I was uh, the overcomer choir was at our church. I don't know if I ever told this. I might have. Amen. But I was standing there with my friends in our, in our pew and, and the choir was singing and I felt the Lord move and I've been seeking the Holy Ghost for years. I never had it, never moved on me before. And I was praying just in my pew, nothing crazy. Said good singing, the Holy Ghost was there. And I spoke in tongues. Out of nowhere. And I didn't know what to do when I just, they stopped singing and I sat down and I'm like, oh Lord, did, did you give it to me? Did you not? And, and what, what's going on? And, and what's, I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't tell anybody. Oh, I, I went on about my way. I, I prayed. I asked God to help me. And I came to camp. And I, I don't know. I think it was Tuesday night. And the preacher preached about the Holy Ghost. And then there's people shouting. There's people jumping. There are people dancing. But I found myself in the corner. Actually, right over here on, the, on these stairs, right over there. And I just say, God, I want to be full of the power of God. I don't just, I've shouted before, I danced, I, I've done all those things, and I felt the Spirit of the Lord. But I said, God, I don't just want the tongues. I don't just want to, I don't just want to have this outward touch where, where you know, people, oh, look at Nathan, he must be doing okay. But I said, God, I have got to have the power of the Holy Ghost. I've got to have a moving of God in my life, and it is what I require. Oh, let me tell you, I might have spoken tongues in April, but I got the power of the Holy Ghost Wednesday night, 2006, right over there during camp. And the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost made a change in me. Young person, you've been looking for more. You realize that you have not got all that you need. And you realize there is more to it. But let me tell you tonight that God is trying to give you the total experience of His power. Amen. Don't let the devil rob that of you. Amen. Do not be denied what God is trying to do in you. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, I don't need to say that. I want to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord one more praise here tonight. I believe the Holy Ghost is wanting to do something in this service. Oh, hallelujah. I believe if we'll obey the Lord, young people, we'll follow the leading of the Spirit. I believe the Lord would like to give us something special in this service tonight. But we're going to have to yield ourselves to Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I just want to go right on right now. Um, I believe the Lord's helping us. It's good to have the group from Bible Holiness here. And it's good to have our Miles here. And so I want him to come at this time. He's going to talk to us and uh, take up an offering. So anyway, it's good to have him here. Thank you for all the help that he does, that he is to Youth Camp, Youth Extreme, supporting. And uh, glad to have him here. Praise the Lord. Love the Lord. And I'm glad for God's help in my life. And uh, thinking back over my life as a Christian, church that got saved and they didn't have camp. Uh, they had camp meeting. And uh, shortly after being saved and uh, being there in camp meeting, uh, I remember uh, uh, <laughs> jumping up on the pew one, one night and running across that pew and screaming, you know, and, and I ran around the church and uh, she said, he don't even got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> uh, but I was excited about being a Christian. And I was excited about the Lord helping me. And uh, I started seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And there was a, a few times where uh, I felt like um, I was going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it just didn't happen. And, and then going to those our Bible Institute, my wife and I went there as a, uh, just right after we got married. And uh, uh, in those services there at school were encouraged to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, receive the uh, power of God for sanctification in my life, set me apart, be a vessel of honor, 
eat for the master's use, but also was encouraged, receive the baptism so you can have power to witness, so I can share the gospel, so I can do the will of God. And so, um, you know, we kind of compacted those together in our lives, and we received the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the infilling of, of the Spirit of God, and then I began to speak in other tongues. I didn't just have two dads going down the back. But I began to speak in other tongues and the power of God. There was evidence. And not only that physical evidence of speaking in other tongues, but we began to have a burden to go out and do something for the Lord and communicate to other people about the gospel, the love of God. And, um, and I, I was only like, I don't know, I was in the 20s, you know, early 20s there. And, um, you know, it, it, you, didn't, you didn't have to have a lot of knowledge. You know, you, you have to have this desire and passion for the Lord and God fill you and God speak to you and God begin to lead you. You don't have a lot of responsibilities um, as a young person. The reason many of you got responsibility because you want a car. You know, you got, you know, you want, you want all these extra things that you have to have. It takes money to pay for them, but sometimes we will sacrifice a few of those things and we can do what God wants us to do. And, but our world says you got to have them to be happy. But God says oh, you can be happy if you'll serve me, if you'll surrender to me, if you'll give everything to me. I'll lead you, I'll guide you, I'll provide for you. And I'm, I'm glad that Jesus has done that for me. God is, he, I have a passion to serve him. You know, I, 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 there's no, there's nobody got a whip, Brother, Brother Gallagher, I am my own boss. Praise God. And um, I don't have I don't have somebody driving me. My pastor doesn't call me. Hey, brother, Miles, why don't you get up out of bed and get to work today? <laughs> he's just not going to do it. And he's, he expects me to get up and do what I need to do. And I, I've learned a lot of things. You know, I, I I I have a habit of being late sometimes. You know, I I guess that's the characteristic of being a youth pastor. I got a little flexibility in me. But uh, I, I had brother Cannon tell me, brother Miles, you you'll grow up. You'll learn to get up. And you'll learn to mature. And uh, I mean, it's just part of the growing process. But anybody ever have a bad hair day? You know, I haven't got a whole lot of hair, but I've had a bad hair day. And uh, you know, what happens though is when we have those bad hair days, we just want to, we just want to quit, right? I mean, uh, I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to see nobody. I don't want nobody to see me. And you know, you just kind of find your little hiding place, and you just kind of back up into your own world. But if we're not, if we're, if we're not careful, that's what the world wants us to do is just back up in our, our life for God. You know, because there's going to be a lot of days that aren't good. There's going to be a lot of days that are difficult. But I want to tell you, with the power of the Holy Ghost, with the, with the dedication that you have in your life, you can do something special for Him. Let me tell you what you need to do if you have a bad hair day. You just need to reconnect with Jesus. Go right back and say, God, I'm sorry. God, help me. Uh, you know, you know what comes with this bad hair days? Anybody ever get mad? <laughs> I've got mad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I had them. I mean, them bad hair days, you know. And then when that happens, you get a, you, know, you get the feel of bad. Anybody ever felt bad after you did something bad? And so then you get backed up in a corner and you just don't feel like doing what you need to do. But I'll tell you what, God wants to help you young people. Young people, you're, you're not perfect, though we're striving to be perfect. You know, we're striving to live for God. We're asking God, forgive us of our sins. God, lead me. God, draw me. Let, let your spirit help me. And, and, that, and, and I think you need to do exactly what Brother Gallagher said. You need to get up and say, I'm my own boss. I'm going to get in. I'm going to let God help me. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to quit. You know, quitters never win. And so what God wants you to do is when you have that bad day is get up and get after it again. I mean, don't, don't say, well, I'm done. I'm done working on the bus ministry, man. I just got, I got a bad attitude. I'm done. You know, I'm not, I'm not even going to go to Sunday school anymore. I'm done. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to serve the Lord. I'm not going to sing in the choir. I get it all the time. But I just had a bad day and I just can't, I just can't do it. Well, I want you to get prayed through. Glory to God. It's as simple as that. You just ask Jesus, help me. Help me. I need your help, Jesus. And that's, that's kind of what Youth Extreme to me is about is when I bring young people up here and I come myself is, God, help us to reconnect with you. Give us, a, give us a new touch. Give us a new desire, a new ambition, a new 
a height to reach in you. Anybody need the baptism of the Holy Ghost here tonight? I think everybody ought to raise your hand. Yeah. I need a baptism of the Holy Ghost, fresh and anew, right? I mean, every day, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost so I can live a sanctified life and so I can be a service to you. Glory to God. Anybody want the outpouring of the Holy Ghost here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will help you if you'll surrender to Him. Surrender everything. There's a, there's a work to do right there at your church. Right there in your community. Right there across the street from your house. There's somebody that needs to know about Jesus. They need to, they need to know the love of God. They need to know the grace of God. And then they need to know that there's people of God that are willing to share and help and love them in the most difficult situation. You know, we got a few of these uh, young guys that are coming to our church, and they're real, real easy to work with. I mean, they, they uh, we pick them up, and we've been picking up for a long time. They're just real easy. It's awesome. I'll tell you what, it ain't always like that. <laughs> I mean... Brother Taylor says, I just want to, I don't know, I won't tell you what he says. <laughs> it's your head off and it's like it in a ditch. And then he says, I'm sorry. But there's people that, that aren't easy to deal with, aren't, you know, Christianity, just because we're, we're, we love Jesus and we want to live for Jesus, doesn't mean everybody's like that. But when they get saved and God works in their life, he changes their lives. He changes the way they act. He changes their, their desire. And I'm seeing that. We have some young people that are coming to church that God's working in their hearts. And, and they're, they, they've had to do just what I told you, get reconnected. I had a young man sitting on the front row one Wednesday night. And I'm sorry, Brother Brandon. Um, I, I got up from praying, and he was sitting there, and he just kind of had his hands in his in his knees there and, and just kind of wring his hands and I walked over to him and I didn't know what was going on. I just said, hey, um, you know that there's uh, there's times in our lives when we fail, when we sin. We, we do things that we didn't want to do and, and uh, we feel bad for those. But you just ask God to forgive you and he, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He's able to help you to move forward. And I said in the, in the story of Joshua, I mean, they did good, and then there was sin, and there was bad, and, but they got up, and went. it's a story of a, a conquest, daily doing the will of God, working and surrendering, get, getting the help of God. And um, I, I got done, and we, I walked away with a thought. That was Wednesday on Friday night. He stood up and testified, and he said, I want to thank the Lord for what Brother Miles shared with me. He said, I told a couple of a couple of other uh, teenagers, young, young men in our church, what he had done. He had told them what he had done. But he got mad on the bus and he said a cuss word to uh, some of the kids on the bus. And he was really sorry for regret. And I said, but once you sin, all you need to do is come reconnect with the Lord. Ask God to help you move forward. Don't quit. Don't give in. Because we're going we're gonna to be with Jesus one day. So tonight, let the Lord help you. Let Him guide you. Let Him direct you. Give Him everything. Love Him with all of your heart. And when, when, when you need Him, He'll be there for you. Hallelujah. Ushers. Hallelujah. I have a dog that's named Tiny. And I want to tell you a story about Tiny. <laughs> I'll save it for another day. Her name was Tiny. Yeah. She's still with us, though. So I'll tell you a tad bit about Tiny. <laughs> that day was Christmas, Christmas morning, right? Christmas morning. Tiny. Comes, my mom is a dog lover, and I'm not a dog lover. I love people, but I just don't, I just don't have that quite affected for dogs. But that dog's been at my house for about 13 years or so or longer. And, uh, Tiny went into convulsions on Christmas morning. And my mom 
I mean, my mom was in the floor crying, and, and she was wanting us to pray and wanting this dog to just survive. And I'm, I'm like, Mom, it's just a dog. It'll be all right. She said, no, we're going to find some help for Tiny. Brother, I paid like five uh, ransoms for my dog to get out of prison. We keep going back. We haven't got as smart as Brother Brown. But my mom took that dog to the emergency room on Christmas morning. So that dog is so taken care of because it costs so much. Glory to God. That's right. Father, we love you. Thank you for your help. Thank you for this camp, this uh, youth extreme. Thank you for the men and women that are leaders of this and the, and the church. I, I want to thank you for the church and the men and women that uh, I can see all their hands, Lord, that have been placed on different buildings here and the work that they've done. I, I pray for just Find blessings in their lives as church members, provide for them financially, help them. But tonight in this uh, offering, we pray that there be a provision beyond what is needed for them. Be able to bless the work of God is here. And we pray in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen today. Amen.
I'm uh, happy to tell you that many pledges have come in and a lot of people have, have sent their pledge in. Work is progressing in the bathhouse. And uh, Brother Andrew Asher, a uh, youth pastor there at Hodgeville Free Gospel Church, uh, he brought his young people up, but him and uh, has a crew in there this weekend uh, putting roughing in the electric and getting that roughed in. It's looking good. The, uh, I've been over there a couple of times, and every time I go in there, they're not there, but something's gotten done. I don't know how they do that, but, but anyway, so... Uh, Maybe there's little people in there working little things in the future. But, uh, but anyway, but I do appreciate him uh, taking his time off, bringing his crew, coming up here, and uh, putting, going to work in there, doing that. And uh, just, it's starting to come together. So we're excited about that. And uh, just wanted to give you, let you know that, the, that we're trying to move in the right direction. It is our goal. Uh, Lord willing to have it functional for youth camp next year. As long as our funds continue to come in and those pledges continue to come in, Lord willing, we'll be able to do that. And uh, we're, we are giving it a, a, the best we can, all right? But uh, appreciate all those that have worked hard. And uh, those that have sent in your pledges, thank you so much. Appreciate you doing that, all right? Amen. Brother Lord, have a talk to you. Praise the Lord. Good to be at Youth Extreme this year. It's my first time being able to be here. I've been to family camp and to the youth camp, but uh, never had the opportunity to come to uh, Youth Extreme. I'm thankful to be here. And uh, I'll take this moment. We're uh, there at the Highway of Holiness in Hamilton, Ohio. Amen. Uh, Brother Pascarello wants to extend an invitation. And anybody, we have homecoming next weekend. Brother Randy uh, Webb is preaching the nights. Brother Chad McDonald is preaching the mornings. And we'd love for you to come. Amen. And, uh, enjoy uh, fellowship with you. Praise the Lord. But amen, it's good to be here. Amen, good to see a lot of friends, a lot of familiar faces. Amen, appreciate Brother Broom and the work he does here. And but ever since I, uh, I got here, and, and last night, Brother Enoch preached so uh, incredible to us last night. Brother Brim, or uh, Brother Gallagher, a uh, he hero uh, of mine, great preacher. Amen, appreciate him. And preached so wonderful to us uh, this morning. Amen, I, I, I believe in my whole heart. Amen. That God wants to see a generation to stand up. Amen. And I believe in my whole heart that God wants to see a generation in a wicked hour that we're living in. Amen. Not to bow down, not to bend. Amen. But he wants us to stand strong. Amen. And what I was thinking, I was uh, reading my devotions a, a couple uh, weeks ago, and I was reading there in 1 Samuel. Amen. The ark of God had been taken and, and uh, they, the, by the Philistines. Amen. And Sister Brim, they put him in the temple of Dagon. Amen. We all know the story of him. And uh, they, the priests of Dagon come in the next morning. And Brother Sproulock, what they find? They find Dagon down in his face. Amen. So they, 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 they're like, well, this is, this is uh, strange, but we're going to put him back up. They set him back up on his pedestal. And, amen. They come in the next day. And what did they find? Amen. They find him in Dagon with his head down, amen, his arms cut off again, face down before the ark of God. Amen. But you read on and it says that the Philistines said that the take the ark of God away from us, amen, because it is hostile to us and to our people. Amen. Can I say they would rather have saved their sin, amen, to be in his presence. Amen. I, I, I kept this thought, kept rolling around in my mind, amen. And like I said, God wants to see, amen, a generation stand strong for him. Amen. But can I say, I feel in my heart, amen, that a lot of you want to do good. You want to stand strong for God, amen. You want to be able to stay in your school, amen, among your family and stand up for God, amen. Amen. But you're too busy reaching down and building back up, amen, when God is torn down. Hallelujah. I believe that God is convicted, amen. God is moving your life this morning.
ultimate authority. Hallelujah. Those Philistines, amen, they wanted nothing to do with God. Amen. It's a danger. Amen. Can I say it is an absolute danger? Amen. Amen. Rebuilding that rubble. Amen. Brings you nothing but trouble. Hallelujah. I want to see God work in your heart. Amen. I want to see you get a hold of it here tonight. Amen. And in the morning. Hallelujah. I want to see a generation go on and stand up for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we lift our hands? Ask God, Lord, work on my heart. Lord, don't let me fall. But Lord, let me come in this complete submission. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to have Brother Gabriel Bontrager here. And uh, he's a youth pastor here at Bethel Chapel. And so we want him to come at this time and just tell us what's on his heart. And uh, good, to, good to have him here. So let's give him our attention tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be here. Praise God. I'm glad to be here. And... Uh, uh, youth Extreme again. Praise the Lord. Has been many, uh, many, probably seven years, been attending a, a Youth Extreme, and you know I want God to do a mighty work. And uh, last night God put some verses in my heart. And I just I want to share them with you, and I really feel like He's put them in my heart for you. I mean, I feel like brother, brother Nathan, God, God was speaking through you there, and then, brother, you were talking about tearing, tearing down walls and letting those top walls be torn down. But I feel Him tonight also, God. Building our lives. In uh, 2 Chronicles 3 and verse 1, it says, Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in the Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared unto David his father, in the place that David had prepared, in the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. And I began to think, you know, David, he had to pay a price. To get the threshing floors on the, so that the temple could be built. He had to sacrifice of his, of his livelihood. He had to sacrifice of his kingdom. And then in, the, in, the, in Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah just simply means that, that, uh, that God has chosen. And you know there's many times in our, in our lives that God chooses things in our hearts. In our lives that we need to sacrifice for him. And you know I want to encourage you to hear tonight. I meant to sacrifice before the Lord. And I, this is the verse that God really spoke and spoke to my heart. It's in the second verse there it says that he began to build the second day. And there's sometimes we feel like we missed opportunities. Last night, what a wonderful sermon, Brother Andy preached. This morning, Brother, you preached a wonderful sermon on, on being the boss. But sometimes we feel like we missed opportunities. And we feel like opportunities have passed us by. But you know what? This is the second day. And I want to tell someone here tonight. And when you sacrifice, there's been a price paid. And then it's time to build tonight. And when you've been coming to this place saying, you know what? God's passed me by. I missed the opportunity last night. And then there's wonderful song service here tonight. So many opportunities. And I've watched them go by. And then when God's giving you a second chance and he wants you to start building. And then what has been done? Sacrifice tonight. And then no place to God put his finger on in your heart. Sacrifice and build on it. Let God work on you. And then let him strengthen you. Praise God. And then there's great rewards. You know, this was the building of the temple. And then, you know, so many times the tabernacle it was moved from here to there. And then, but the temple was a final resting place. And you know what? God wants to do a mighty and permanent work in your life. But you have the first sacrifice to begin to build. And then the glory of that temple was so wonderful. And then there were so many costly things that went in that temple and it was beautiful. And then I begin to think about sacrifice. The more that you sacrifice, the more that you build. Praise God. The more that God can do in your life. The more the wonderful work that he will do. And then I want to encourage you tonight. Reach out. Sacrifice. And let God do the work. Praise God. Praise God. I want the choir to be coming. And uh, let's come quickly and let's get right in. Let's worship the Lord tonight.
Our labor of love is not in vain. Amen. I'm glad God sees and rewards. Thank you for this opportunity. Be here very much. Amen. John chapter number 7, verse number 37 is where we'll be reading our text. Hallelujah. Appreciate this. Good to see so many of my friends right here in the house of God. Some of you, Brother uh, Brent, already made mention about PFYC. You see some of the date cards back there in the back. I'll pick one of those up and take them with you. It's April the 5th and 6th, 2018. Looking for God to move there. Man, there's nothing wrong with praying for meetings all across. Amen. Let's support it. We're, we're in this together, ain't we? Amen. Praise God. I'm reading verse number 37. It says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Hallelujah. Let's pray before we're seated. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Holy Ghost that's already moved in this house. We're asking you, God, to increase, to move, to be lifted up. God, in this house in a greater way. Lord, we don't want to get in your way. Don't let me hinder you, Lord, in any way. I pray in Jesus' name. God, but I'm asking you that your divine will would be done. Let your anointing fall in this altar and on us. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise and glory for it. And the church says, Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Here we read the story about Jesus on that last day of the feast. Now, uh, we know that this very instance, this, uh, this, the Feast of the Tabernacles had been taking place for at least a thousand years. Every year, this thing had taken place. Well, well over a thousand years, but we can know for sure that this had taken place at least a thousand times, this Feast of the Tabernacle. Now, as Pentecostals in America, we have had Pentecost right here for a little over a hundred years. There's some early reports uh, of outbreaks uh, in the 1800s, but the late 1800s, amen, God began to move, and we've had Pentecost, amen, right here on our show as a widespread for a hundred, over a hundred years. Amen. And so we do a lot of things that just become rituals. And they just become, that's what we do. Hallelujah. And, and we've been doing this for about a hundred years here as Americans. And so you can imagine as a, a, a thousand years, they've been doing this same thing. And we got a lot of people that come to church and, and we do what we do and they sit there Hey Amen. They just watch and, you know, they just uh, spectate and, and they say, hey Amen, we've been to church. <clears throat> Amen. You know, I, I took my nephew fishing here, uh, Jaden Paul, uh, Paul's oldest boy, and we went fishing and he caught several fish and I didn't catch anything. And when we left, I wanted to tell him, hey Amen, that we caught seven fish. Yeah. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. Because I was with him. And we were fishing as a team. And so we caught seven fish. Hallelujah. He didn't think that was very good. Now when we went the last time, and he didn't catch anything. Hallelujah. It was the other way around. But, amen, I see a lot of people that come to church like that. What do they call that? Vicarious participators. Hallelujah. Where they participate from the state. They say, we won. You didn't get on the field. You didn't win. They won. Hallelujah. Hey man, how many's gonna get in church tonight and say, I got what I needed? Hallelujah. Not they had church or we had church, but I had church. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hey man, so you had a lot of those 
kind of people I'm sure have watched this situation go on and take place how, how we know that they took water that pitcher of water that golden pitcher of water and there's some uh, you know some say they didn't do it on the eighth day some say they did do it whatever hey, amen but they, they had it was all about that water how, how God provided water hey, amen there uh, and brought them into the promised land how, and so they take that water and they march around and, and they pour it out on the altar and, and they do their thing. Hallelujah. Amen. So all this has been happening huh? and it's just a ritual. Huh? Amen. Don't seem like there's much to it. Huh? They're just doing it because that's what we do. Hallelujah. I wonder sometimes, huh? amen, if, if you've ever been asked the question, why does sister, why does sister, so why does she always shout like that? Why does she all, she just does that. She always does that. She's always been the one to shout. She's always been the one to run. Hey man, let me, that's probably happening. Hey man, what was happening here? A thousand years has been going on. Those children are probably saying, why in the world they pouring water out on that altar? Why in the world they doing that thing? It was all just a ritual. It was all just something that they done. I don't ever want church to be that way. Do you? Oh, praise God. Hey, my church, we are living in a day of great performance. But very few partakers. Hey, man, people that know how to play the part, do the right thing, say the right words. Hey, man, but they never partake in the real river that God has for them. Praise God. And so if the Lord will help me tonight, and you'll help me. Hey, man, I like to preach on breaking out of the box. Would you get that for me? Hey, man, now this one I'm about to bring you out. I, I hope I don't I'll take you away too much here. Hey, man, but I want to try to preach on breaking out of the box. How many has ever been down the toy aisle at Walmart and pushed every button on every toy? Oh, yeah, you're smiling. Is that not a blast? I love doing that. You still do it? Yeah, I don't push buttons on the one don't do it. I never have. <laughs> now, I like to do that. Hey, man, push the button, see what they do. But I noticed something about these when I was doing that one. I used to sing. You should have seen the kids when I was taking that toy out. They were like, man, I wish that was me. Hallelujah. You know, me and that old, old, old lady was the only ones on the toy out when I bought this one. You know, we kind of just didn't look at each other. <laughs> But I noticed something about this, these toys that reminded me a lot of my generation of young people. Amen. They, it reminded me so much. You see, amen, you can hit this button. And see that thing? It turns. It moves. It does everything just like it's supposed to. Moves up and down. It, it says it's got power. Cat power. I mean, it does all these things, but there's one thing I noticed. It, it never gets out of the box. It never does anything different. Oh, hallelujah. Now, what it says on the box is the, the feel of real. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm not satisfied with just performing. I want to feel the real thing. Oh, hallelujah. And, and I'm so glad uh, that you know how to stomp on feet. Uh, I'm so glad uh, you know how to raise your hands. Uh, I'm so happy uh, that you sing on too. Uh, hey, man, but have you been out of the box lately? Uh, hey, man, uh, do you just have everything uh, the way that you're supposed to do it? Uh, the way mama done it? Uh, the way daddy does it? Uh, hey, man, or do you do it? Uh, because that's the way heaven does it. Uh, and that's the way God calls you to do it. Uh, are you just performing? Uh, is it just the way you do it? Uh, or is it really down deep in your heart? Hallelujah. Hey Amen. You know what? I've seen pastors and I've seen preachers. You know what they're famous for doing? They're famous for pushing the buttons. Hey Amen. You better believe it. That young, that youth pastor comes around. Hey, come on, come on. Let's get in church. Let's have churches. Hey, Amen. Let's do whatever it takes. Hey, man, come on. Praise God. Lift up your hand. Hallelujah. Let's have church. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey, and the youth pastor put those up. Oh, finally, somebody get their hand up. Somebody act like you know they can be a But when they go back home, hey, man, and they leave you in camp, they're still in the box. And they never got out of where they 
have always been. Oh, hallelujah. I believe God and know surely in my heart that God is raising up a generation to bring revival to this land. But he's wanting to get it in your heart. Get it way down deep to break all the way out of the box. I'm talking about three words that are very common, very easy to remember. That is praise, prayer, and power. Hallelujah. They need to get out of the box. Hey, like we're reading Psalms 42. Hey, this psalmist is saying that. He said, I've gone with the multitude. I went with him to the house of God with a voice of joy and praising with the multitude that kept the hope. I did everything right. Hey, Amen. Why? Then he says this. But why am I still cast down? Oh, my soul. And why art thou disquieted within me? He says, oh, my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember thee. He said, I did everything right. I praised them. I went with them. They were joyful. I did everything right. Hey, but I couldn't get out of the box. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, but I just want to explain to you. I want to take my time if that's all right. Hey, my young people, if praising God is clapping your hands, Hey man, if that is considered a praise, hey man, then there is devils in hell that praise God. And when they applaud in the, in the arenas, then they're praising God. It's not the sound of your hands clapping together that pleases God. If raising your hands means you are lifting Him up, that's not praise. Oh, hallelujah. If dancing to the beat means you're praising God, then they praise God in the bar room. Oh, come on now. Amen. Praising God is when you got something on the inside. It's got to come out on the outside. And it's got to say, I love you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Because you got to get out of the box. It ain't about how many times you clap. Hey man, they 
still knew how to praise him. Helen, can I ask you, young person, when you walk through the mall, when you walk through, hey, my the school rooms, hey, my, do you still praise him? Or have you crawled back up in that box? Oh, hallelujah. Do you still got a worship on your heart when it's Wednesday night and nobody's moving and it's just dead and dry as cracker juice? Hey, man, do you still got your praise? Or have you put it back in the box? Hey, man, do you really got a love for God in your heart? Oh, why don't somebody hey, man, make up their mind? I'm getting out of the box tonight. I'm getting all the way loose. I'm going to live for God.
tell you something amazing about prayer. Is the Bible says we have not because we ask not. This is very simple. But the reason you don't have that blessing is because you haven't asked for that blessing. Oh, hallelujah. We expect God to just give it to us. But that's why God introduced prayer. Because God responds to prayer. Let me prove that to you. We find a ship. It's out on the ocean. The storm is raging. Now if God is going to react, He's going to react to crisis, right? He's going to react to storms. He's going to react to problems. Hey man, no, He stayed asleep in the storm. He stayed asleep in the crisis. But somebody went down and they cried. Hey man, and God responded. Can I tell you, God never responds to crisis. God always responds to cries. And when you pray, that's when God's going to move. Do you need the Holy Ghost? Have you prayed about it? Have you asked God for it? Have you begged Him for it? You need Him. Why don't you pray? Let me tell you about a prayer that was out of the box. Hallelujah. That's over in Acts chapter number 4, ain't it? It says that when they had prayed, the place was set where they were assembled together. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I wish we could get our prayer out of the box. Hallelujah. I'm not making fun, but those old simple prayers that you've been praying for all those years, please, I know God hears them, please. I know this could be dangerous, but why don't you pray something new? Why don't you ask God, have a goal when you pray. Don't have an aimless prayer. Oh, come on. Don't just go up there and say a word. Hey, man, is that even considered prayer? Hey, man, you can say all the right things that you've heard say. Hey, man, but when are you going to move out of the box and pray like you ain't ever prayed? Sing God like you ain't ever sought it. Tear your heart like you've never torn it. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Bless me. Bless me. This whole, this, you know the Holy Ghost is a person. It's not just an emotion. Not just a feeling. He is a person. And he is God. I said the Holy Ghost He is God Hallelujah He is not diminished He is not less Amen It's the triune Godhead And you need The Holy Ghost You need The Holy Ghost Hallelujah how many is going to help me pray for at least 15 to go through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost right here in this house? Hey, now, are you tired? Let me tell you something. I just got to tell you. If you're okay with just being in the box, you'll probably die in the box. But when you get uncomfortable and say, I'm tired of spinning my wheels. I'm tired of just burning rubber. I'm ready to go somewhere with God. I'm ready to do something. Experience something greater in God. When you feel like you're going to die without the Holy Ghost, that's when you're going to live with Him. When you feel like you can't make it without Him, that's when He's going to fall. I said, I got heaven. I got to get out of this box. I got to experience a greater anointing. I got to experience a greater power. There's a lot of people that mistake the Spirit of Christ for the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And they stop themselves way too short. Now the Acts chapter 2 church, amen, they knew Jesus better than any of us. And they could have said, we're okay. We're just staying right here. Amen. But they went to that Acts chapter 2 room. And they got up in that little box. And the power of the Holy Ghost got to follow them. And got to pushing their buttons. And they just couldn't stay there. Oh, hallelujah. They had to break out of that room. And go and tell somebody else. I just got to insert this. I, I met a lady that was 32 years old. And had only witnessed to one person in her entire life. And that broke my heart. Young person, if Jesus ain't no better. But you can't tell somebody about it. You're in a mighty tight box. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost so you can get out of that box and be a witness in school. I said I wish somebody would get out of the box. There's a lot more preaching right there. But it is time. I believe right now it's time for the church to go deeper in the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. I said, I believe it's time for you to leave this place with a greater anointing than you've ever had in your life. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not willing to do this. Hey, but I feel like doing it. Youth pastor. Hey, when the devil's been trying to make you feel like you can't grow anymore. You've done all you can do right there. Hey, man, it's trying to put you in that little box. Hey, man, but in the name of Jesus. Hey, man, the Holy Ghost is going to fall on you tonight and break you out of that box. Oh, hallelujah. And you'll have Pentecost again. You'll have revival again. You'll see growth again. I said, I'm getting out of the box. I'm going to pray my way out. I'm going to praise my way out. Until I get all the way out. Uh, why don't you just go ahead and praise the Lord just a little while. Get out of my box. 
I feel most comfortable here. This is where people see me. And I'm not comfortable out of this. Preacher, I've been in this box for a long time. Hallelujah. I've been this way for long. I've been just going through the motions for a long time. I've just been doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I really don't have all the Holy Ghost I need. Hey, well, maybe you've been there for a long time. Let me tell you about a lady that was in the box for 12 years. Hey, man, said she had tried all she could. Hey, man, but she came to Jesus and he broke her out of that box. You say, well, I've been in it longer than that, maybe. Well, let me tell you about a man that sat in a pool, a pool called Bethesda for 38 years. He had been in that box for a mighty long time. But when Jesus showed up, he broke him out of the box. You say, bitch, I've been in longer than that. Let me tell you. About a man in Acts chapter 3. Huh? And we read in 4 and 22. Huh? And he was above 40 years old. Huh? And he had been there since a child. Huh? At that gate. Huh? Doing the same thing. Huh? And remember there was three men. Huh? And there were two men that came walking up. Huh? And had a power. Huh? To break the pot. Huh? And in the name of Jesus. Huh? And when I said somebody can get out.